Okay, welcome to uh, Cloud Energy 101, uh, week 11. Okay, so uh, for week 11, we're going to talk about muscle cells. Okay, why is it so important to talk about muscle cells? Is because the um, animals, okay, most of the meats that you produce uh, or use in your cooking is going to be uh, based on the uh, animal muscle cells. Okay, so later on, the next chapter, we're going to talk about conversion from muscle to meat. So it's very important for you to understand how muscle works first before you uh, learn about how it converts from muscle to meat, which is use it to cooking. Okay. Okay. For the uh, proteins, okay. For the protein structure, the the muscle, uh, it contains these few things here: the actin and the myosin as the uh, the major protein in the muscle cells. So, movement arrays from the activity of a protein-based molecular motors fueled by ATP. Okay, so it's very important to know that the ATP actually fuel the uh, movement. Yeah, without ATP, there's no movement. Okay, so later we're going to talk more about that as well. So during movement, okay, large aggregates of motor proteins undergo a cyclic conformation change that accumulate into a unified directional force. Okay, so what what it means right is that the muscle all contract together in the same way okay so it's not like one part contract more than the other one if it's the whole muscle fiber it will contract together okay and relax contract and relax yeah so the major proteins that i have just mentioned they are myosin and actin okay all right let's look closely to the uh, muscle muscle is uh, made of what we call a bundle of muscle fibers so if you actually um, look closer or pull out one by one you can actually see that it's made of uh, repeating units of the myosin and the actin okay so you can see from here it's actually a repeat uh, aggregates of the uh, the actin and myosin that align uh, with each other yeah so you can see from here this part over here is what we call the m line okay or the a bands so the, uh, the M line is here, the A bands, you can see from here. Okay, this is the non-contracted muscle proteins here. And then over here is the uh, Zactis and the I band. Okay, so the I band is over here. So you can see that there are a bundle of the myosin that actually will interact with the actins uh, for contractions here. Okay, so these are basically the uh, muscle fibers, okay. Um, let's look closely to uh, the myosin and the actins, the, the structure of it. So you can see from here, the myosin is a image of the uh, coil uh, of two units here, yeah, of two units of the uh, myosin. And here you can see that they are uh, intertwined with each other. Uh, and there are two of the uh, myosin head over here. Yeah, Myosin head, myosin head. Okay. So this myosin head over here is the one that will be interacting with the actin. Okay. Uh, so at the actin, there will be a myosin uh, binding site. So this myosin, uh, this myosin head will interact with the myosin binding site at the actin. Okay. All right. The reason why here over here there is a coin, okay, intertwined coin over here is because of increasing the strength, increasing the strength of the muscle. All right. So this muscle. As actually there are certain area, okay, there are some specific area that is very prone to enzymatic hydrolysis. Yeah, so basically what it means is that uh, if you uh, subjected the uh, myosin head to enzyme, the enzyme will break at the specific point. So, uh, for example, if you use trypsin, trypsin will target this area. Okay, so we will cut over here and you break this. Whereas papain, they will. Uh, target the myosin head yeah, more towards the myosin head so it will cut over here and release the myosin head okay how relevant is this uh, the the hydrolysis of the uh, myosin head uh, to to your to your to your meat is that uh, it works the same way yeah because uh, it commonly we in the cooking we actually use uh, the enzymes which is called the papain to tenderize the meat so it works away the same thing okay the papain will uh, actually break the head away from the tail of the myosin 
So what happened is that once this is break, okay, so it can no longer interact with the actin. Okay, in that case, the muscle will tenderize. Okay, it will uh will not be in the contraction mode, and then so that it will uh tear apart. Okay, so so that is uh relevance to the uh, muscle uh to the meats here. Okay, uh, so the muscle. So it's very important for you to understand the muscle so that you can actually uh work with the meats in your food products uh developments. Yeah. Okay, so that is myosin. Uh, this is the uh, myosin in the bundle. So you can see that uh, the myosin is just not one strain. Yeah, okay, so they will have a lot of myosin. So all these are intertwined. Okay, they are intertwined, two intertwined into uh, one bundle. Okay, uh, and uh, there are multiple of the uh, myosin head uh, that will be uh, worked together. So this is the actin. Actin same thing as well is interwine. Okay. Uh, the reason as well is the same that the interwine so that is more strong. Okay. The reason why they make into this interwine is to make it stronger. Yeah. So you can see that uh, over here is basically the myosin head. Okay. So this one is this part. Okay. So it's this part. All right. So this is the myosin head. So the myosin head actually will interact uh, with the actin. So this is the actin. Okay, this is uh, basically this. Okay, so at the actin there will be what we call the uh, myosin binding site. Okay, so this myosin binding site at the actin is actually protected. Okay, if you're looking at here, right, you can see the actin. Okay, there's a site over here which is the myosin binding site. All right, so it's being protected by this troponin and tropomyosin. So these two troponin and tropomyosin protect the actin from the myosin head binding. All right. So what happened is that uh, in the presence of calcium, later I talk, we'll talk more about the uh, the mechanism. Okay. So in the presence of calcium, calcium will bind to troponin. Once the calcium binds to troponin, this uh, complex will change in conformations. Okay, the uh, tropomyosin will uh, actually uh, be removed from or released from the myosin binding site. So this myosin binding site is now available for the myosin head to uh, interact. Yeah. Okay. So let me just uh, just just draw it. So here probably here that's what we call the myosin. Binding site, okay. binding site. Okay, so same thing as well. Now you see the myosin binding site, myosin binding site. Okay, on the actin now is available for interaction with the myosin head. That is the point of uh, contraction. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the point where it leads to um the first step to contraction. Okay. Alright, so again, yeah, <coughs> the uh, actin, okay, the actin, there is this uh, myosin binding site that uh, is for the myosin head to interact. But usually, when there's no muscle contraction, the pro 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 troponin and the tropomyosins, they will actually uh, block the myosin head from interaction. But in the presence of calciums, uh, calciums will actually bind to troponins and will lead to a conformation change. So the propomyosin now is uh, being released or removed from the uh, myosin binding site. The myosin head can actually bind to the actin. Yeah? So it's very similar to this. Now the uh, myosin head binds to the myosin binding site. All right. <clears throat> so this is actually what happened. If you, are, if you have a relaxed muscle, you can see that this is the myosin, this is the actin. They are far apart. You can see that there is a distance between this actin and this actin. During the contractions, you can see that they will go closer and closer. Okay, so imagine this is the uh, the 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 uh, actin. Okay, um, okay. So this is the actin. So it will go closer and closer and closer. Okay, this is contraction, and then this is relaxation again. Okay, during contraction, it will move closer and closer and closer. All right. Of course, it will be uh, much more spontaneous. Yeah, not so slow. Okay. 
Okay, let's look at the uh, molecular mechanism of muscle contractions. So the first thing is that the uh, muscle contraction will be triggered. So it's from the brain. The brain will send a signal that telling that the muscle should be contracting. So the act they will send a, from the brain, they will send what we call the action potential for muscle contractions. So they will send a signal to the, the uh, synapse, okay, and uh, this, uh, muscle, this action potential view cause a release of the calcium ions okay so normally the calcium ions are being stored in what we call the sarcoplasmic reticulum okay and with the help of the calcium pump they will maintain a high concentration in the sarcoplasmic reticulum but in the in uh, in the trigger once it's triggered by the action potential the calcium ion will be released okay the calcium will be released to the muscle cells all right, they will be released to the muscle cells. So the uh, the calcium ions, like as what I have uh, mentioned just now, the calcium ion will actually bind to what we call the troponins, and they will lead to a change in the conformations and lead to the release of the tropomyosin from the myosin binding site on the actin. Okay, so now uh, once it's released ready, the myosin head will immediately bind to the myosin binding site okay so if there's no, no nothing else here it will just bind once it's removed it will just bind to the uh, myosin binding site so the next step right is that it will require atp molecule to bind to the myosin head okay it will require a uh, atp to bind to the myosin head so you can see from here the me uh, the mechanism over here so you can see that the myosin head, again you can see over here, the myosin head, uh, once is uh, the tropomyosins uh, being released from the uh, myosin binding site, the myosin head will bind to the actin. All right? In order for the muscle contraction to happen, you will require the ATP. Without ATP, the myosin head will continue bind to the actin. Yeah? So once the ATP bind to the myosin, uh, myosin head, the myosin head will release from the myosin binding site. Okay, you can see that once ATP uh, binds to it, it will remove from the myosin binding site. So once the ATP hydrolyzed to ADP, okay, you can see from here, ATP hydrolyzed to ADP, you lead to what we call a power stroke. Okay, so it's, it's like that. Okay, so you lead to a power stroke and once released, ATP binds to the myosin head. Okay, so you release and once ATP uh, hydrolyzed to ADP, it will lead to a power stroke. Okay, it will lead to a power stroke, and immediately, uh, once the ADP remove from the head, it will release. Okay, it will release and binds to another side. Okay, it will release and binds back to the myosin binding side. Yeah, so they will have a power stroke and binds to it. So it will remain in this position until another ATP molecule binds to it. They will release and then ATP uh, hydrolyzed to ATP power stroke and you stuck there. Okay, so this con this will continue uh, during the muscle contraction. Yeah, so you can see from here, ATP binds to the myosin head, releasing the myosin head from actin. ATP hydrolyzed to ADP. Okay, ATP is triphosphate. ADP is diphosphate. So Hydrolyzed to ATP means that one phosphate has been removed from ATP. This leads to the power stroke. And the ATP is removed from the myosin head, where myosin heads remain attached to the actin, yeah, until another molecule is attached to the myosin head. So this will repeat to number uh, number one again. Okay. Uh, so this will re uh, repeat to number one again. Contractions, yeah. Okay. So the action potential, okay. The uh, calcium will release and so forth. So this will repeat again and again during the muscle contractions. Yeah. Once uh, during the muscle relaxation, what happened right is that the calcium ion will be removed. Okay, the calcium ions will be removed uh, by using the calcium pump. Okay, so the calcium ions will be removed by the calcium pump back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Yeah. So the calcium pump right will require uh, the ATP to, to actually run. Okay. So the ATP, uh, the calcium pump will run in the presence of ATP and the calcium will be pumped back to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Once there's no calcium, what happened? The tropo, uh, 
uh, the uh, troponins, I guess the troponins view actually changed back to the confirmations and the tropomyosin view actually block okay, the myosin binding site. Okay, once it's blocked, what happens is that the myosin head can no longer bind to the actin, so it will relax. Okay, so that is the whole mechanisms of the uh, muscle contractions. Yeah. Okay, so it's very important for you to know how, how it works, yeah, the muscle contractions. Let's look at this, yeah. Uh, the regulation of muscle contraction actually is uh, driven by the calcium. So please make sure that you understand that calcium actually are uh, not only for your for the bones, okay, calcium also for muscle contractions. So for muscle contractions, the calcium pump, which is ATP driven, which means that uh, it requires ATP, okay, it requires ATP to actually pump the calcium uh, uh, and maintain and maintain the calcium ions in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Yeah? Without ATP, calcium pump cannot uh, cannot uh, pump, okay, cannot uh, maintain the calcium inside sarcoplasmic reticulums. Then the, the calcium will diffuse out, okay, in the uh, in the case when there's no ATP, yeah. So during muscle contractions, calcium release into cytosol of muscle cells. Okay, during muscle relaxation, calcium pumps will facilitate the storage of calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulums. So this is uh, how they actually regulate the calcium. Yeah, the highlight is actually the ATP. You can see that the ATP plays a very important role in maintaining the calcium pump. Okay, so uh, just to add on a little bit uh, before the next one. The ATP also, you can realize, uh, you need to know that the ATP only being produced, okay, when the animal is still alive, okay. Only when the animal is still alive, where they can uptake the oxygens, the ATP production is at its maximum capacity, yeah. But once the animal is dead, the ATP production will actually push to minimum and it can deplete very, very fast, okay. In the absence of ATP, calcium pump cannot uh, cannot functions, okay, and so does the uh, contraction and relaxations, uh, especially the relaxation cannot be done yeah, uh, in the absence of ATP. Okay, ATP play a very important role. So when calcium ion detach tropomyosins from the myosin binding site in actins, ATP is required to bind the myosin head to be released from actin attachments, yeah. So you need to know that the ATP play a very important role, not only in maintaining the calcium ions, it's also to actually detach the myosin head from the myosin binding sites on the actins, as well as leading to a power stroke, stroke yeah, when it hydrolyzed to ATP. When there's no ATP available, okay, during conversion from muscle to meat, okay, so when the animals uh, is uh, being slaughtered, okay, when the animal is being slaughtered, uh, and so the ATPs will be depleted until not available anymore, okay. Uh, in that case, the calcium pump cannot be maintained. So what happened is that, uh, the calcium ion will diffuse, okay, the, uh, the, the, the law is that if you diffuse from high concentration to lower concentration area, which is the muscle cells. In that case, what happened? The troponin will, uh, the calcium will bind the troponins, lead to conformational change, and the uh, tropomyosin will be removed from the myosin binding site. Okay, in that case, once the tropomyosin removed from the uh, myosin binding site, the the myosin head will directly attach with the actin. Okay, so what happened? Now it's attached already. Can you release or not? It can't be released without ATP. So in that case, it will continue to interact with the uh, the muscle, the, the actin, yeah. So the myosin head will continue to interact with the actins. So this is uh, what happens or uh, uh, a phenomenon called the rigor mortis. Yeah, we term this rigor mortis because the muscle will become stiff because you, it, the myosin head attached with the actin and not moving at all. That's why it's stiff, yeah. Uh, the muscle is very, very stiff. And that, that scenario is what we call rigor mortis, okay? <coughs> uh, but some, some people will ask me, sir, 
uh, does rigor mortis will like last forever? No, it doesn't. Yeah, until a certain period of time, okay, the muscle will start to relax due to uh, the breakdown of the muscle fibers. It could be due to um, the external enzymes for maybe from bacteria and so forth, or it can internally enzymes that actually start to hydrolyze the meats. Okay, so the rigor mortis is uh, after. Um, the animal has been slaughtered, okay, not immediately, but once the ATP has been exhausted, rigor mortis will happen, and until the being broken down by enzymes can be internal or external enzymes, uh, then the muscle will start to relax again, yeah. Okay, this is uh, basically the biochemical pathway of ATP productions. So I have uh, mentioned uh, this uh, briefly uh, in uh, last chapter during the cells. So I have spoken that when the uh, animal is still alive, this is the full capacity, okay? Full capacity, the biochemical pathway in productions of ATP. Yeah? Where is happen over here? This one will happen in the site of the uh, the cells, and this citric acid cycle as well as the uh, phosphor uh, oxidative phosphor relations. These two steps will happen in the mitochondria. Okay, uh, in order for this to perform fully, they will need the oxygen. How they got oxygen is through breathing. The animal need to be alive in order to breathe in oxygen to facilitate the uh, whole full biochemical pathway in conversion the uh, glucose into ATP. Yeah? Okay, and you produce the maximum capacity of ATP in this case. Uh, please take note, yeah, the glucose uh, can become from like starch or things like that break down, and then the glucose will feed into the biochemical pathway. When the animal is not alive, what happens? This no longer can happen, okay? Over here, can no longer happen. This part especially can, okay? So this fermentation is to facilitate the production, minimum amount, just minimum amount of exhausted or the lactate start to kill the cell, yeah? Alright, so in that case, ATP will deplete very very fast okay and it will lead to what we call the uh rigor mortis yeah exactly the same mechanism i have mentioned about okay okay uh so i will end with this please go to this two uh video okay which is on youtube you will look at the animation of the muscle contractions okay please view these two videos to get a fuller uh, a full pictures of muscle contractions okay uh, exams uh, most likely uh, exam can come out in this uh, this kind of uh, questions asking you to explain about the muscle contractions yeah okay so make sure you uh, know how the muscle is being contract uh, how the muscle contracts yeah and what is uh, the uh, uh, rigor mortis and so forth okay so I have uh, prepared the uh, tutorial questions. Okay, is for you to practice in uh, describing the muscle contractions as well as some of the regulations, uh, how the muscle is being regulated and what is rigor mortis. So please, uh, either you print it out or you can do directly on the word documents, um, or PDF uh, documents. Okay, by typing the answer out. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe you can just take a piece of paper and start writing down, okay, to describe the steps of muscle contractions, okay, as well as the usage of the ATP, calciums, as well as what is rigor mortis, yeah, okay, that is your, uh, the, the tutorial uh, work, okay. So thank you very much. So please make sure that you, uh, write down, okay, if you got questions, please write down in the uh, padlets okay if you got no questions okay please uh, indicate no questions in the padlets right thank you very much